I think the long-term implications will be that there are going to be athletes in the community who should have been Olympians who will never get the chance to be an Olympian. Steve Solomon running good. My name is Steve Solomon. I'm an Australian Olympic sprinter and a six-time defending Australian champion over the 400 metres. Steve Solomon powering like a Terminator towards the finish line. January 2020 kind of kick off of the Olympic season and I opened up in the fastest I've ever run before. You know, we already have the energy of the Olympic Games and then we add on top of that, that I'm in shape that I've never been in at that point in time of the year. You know, I was really feeling confident and excited. But at the same time, it's like, how do you envision a games going ahead where you can see that Italy is just erupted on this exponential curve of, of infection? And I think that's where the energy started turning from this really positive uh, momentum to uh, stress and, and distress. Every day felt like a marathon. Receiving phone calls and texts from people all into the community. The inevitable has finally been confirmed. The Olympic Games in a few months is simply not viable. For athletes, I mean, if you've been training under the thinking that this is happening in July 2020, it's not as simple as, okay, I have an extra year to train. The right decision was made. All right, it's happened. We knew it should happen. It happened. Now we've got to deal with it. At the Olympic Games, you, you have to be the best. You have to push yourself in ways that no one else in the world is pushing yourself because you can literally name the people that you're competing against on the entire planet. And you got to make sure that you're doing more than that. And that was something that I had to readapt to in this, in this coronavirus isolation lockdown time period. I haven't been able to train in an athletics track in months. I haven't been able to train in a gym in months. I haven't been able to go and train in a pool in months. And I don't know when I'll be able to do any of those things. You know, all these small little one percenters that we need to do because we're pushing our bodies so friggin' hard, we need to make sure that it stays in one piece, are harder to do. Thankfully, I'm a runner. You know, I'm not a high jumper or pole vaulter who needs specific equipment. The biggest equipment I need are my feet and my shoes, and I can take those and train in different environments. There are many athletes in the community who have lost their main tools. They've lost their shoes, so to speak. You know, they've lost their uh, ability to train the technical side of their sport. You know, you t even you look at team sports not being able to train together. You know, it's chemistry, it's synergy that's able to make team sports what they are. To put all on top of that, you've got one more challenge. How do we qualify for the Olympic Games again when we can't travel right now? I know what it takes to make an Olympic Games. I know what it takes to miss out on Olympic Games. I know the energy and the dedication and the choices that you have to make to give yourself a chance of success. We live and die in a world where four hundredths of a second is everything. Every training session, every run, every jump, every sprint, every throw, every lunge, every warm up, every cool down, it all makes a difference. So the question arises, how can we achieve perfection in an imperfect environment? And the answer is we most likely can't. And as a result of all these changes, there are going to be athletes who should have become Olympians that now will never get the opportunity to do so.